So I was doing some playing around here with my motorized bike and I had milled down the head to uh, get some more compression because I know that these are a uh, 6 to 1 um, compression ratio. So that's pretty low so I thought I'd boost it. But anyway before I did any of that I checked the, uh, the PSI with a compression tester and really with and I got 150 PSI reading and really that shows me that there's no true correlation between PSI and compression because uh, what is it the uh, atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 PSI so hypothetically you should be able to divide your uh, your PSI that you got with your gauge through the spark plug hole with that 14.7 and get a compression ratio number but that's not true obviously because I already knew that this was a 6 to 1 engine and then the math that I just said would give me a 10 to 1 compression ratio which is not at all correct so there's no real correlation there so you really can't do that um, what you can do with it is check all your cylinders and make sure they're at the same PSI which is real important it shows good health throughout the engine uh, and what I found with a lot of my car builds is that you know you can run 150 psi motors like real well on pump regular gas they generally don't have a problem with that you know depending on cast iron or aluminum heads it really doesn't matter but uh, in my opinion you're really leaving something on the table with that so I like to run I like to see when an engine's built somewhere between 180 to 200, and 180 is still 91 or 93 octane or 92 octane, uh, whatever you have. It's still uh, pump gas friendly with the uh, the premium fuel, so that's pretty good. But um, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to make a note that there is entirely no correlation between. PSI and compression they can't be equated so and you wouldn't be you wouldn't be getting a static compression ratio on a car anyway because you have camshaft overlap and duration and that that's entirely different than a static compression so you know you'd be getting a dynamic compression reading at best and even yet still it isn't correct so anyway it's always good to see 150 PSI or higher on your motor, you know, and if you got a, you're trying to build yourself a pretty powerful motor, you want to be somewhere in the 180 range or above, but anywho, that's really about it, so now you know.